That was one of the biggest moments that a lot of people won't realize. Perfect, perfect, got it. I always think a second is the first loser. There's no oh, way he junior. won that game. The competitor in me wanted to get that third championship. I wanted to get it so bad. Kreiner coming out firing. With MLB The Show 24 right around the corner, how about we look back at MLB The Show 23 and the esports tournament, the championship series with the man himself. Kreiner, are you ready to do this? Let's do it. Here's yeah. Kreiner against Wilsey. Just feels like Kreiner's waiting to get going here. Let's see if he can find it here in the bottom of the ninth. Let's talk about the matchup against Wilsey because you were down four. So what's your mindset and, and that ninth inning? What are you thinking? The way I look at it is all the pressure's on him. Like if I lose 6-2, no one's like going crazy oh you didn't score in the ninth you lost by four but with him like if you blow a four run lead in the ninth all the pressure's on him so i just played loose and free and whatever happened happened it's a base hit they'll hold fox to a single you think he felt comfortable at this point what do you think was going through his mind yeah i think he was still very stressed the way i look at it i am never fully happy until there's 27 outs and i see the game is over exit screen that's the only time i'm breathing the whole game so i think getting that first runner on right there is really when he started maybe getting a bit nervous Thanks for lou trevino get better chances of getting mistakes he's hit. gonna get another swing things are getting interesting here in the bottom of the ninth you have two strikes you don't need a strikeout or a double play. Was that another one of those examples trying to regroup? Yeah, I definitely had to reset. Every at-bat's a bit different, the situation. So here, I knew he was going low. I was ready for it. And thankfully, because there's sometimes you can make a great swing and it's just a right to the shortstop. So you, you need a bit of luck. And thankfully, I was able to get under that one just enough to get that out of the ballpark. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. Perfect, perfect. Got him. Triner's finding it. He's got two outs left. And he's now only down one. All of a sudden, you scored three in the ninth. You're down one. So at this point, I'm assuming you're feeling pretty comfortable because you have Jose Ramirez, which we know how good he is in the game. Yeah, just keeping the uh, line moving here. I was lucky. He just threw me an outside sinker, and I was able to take that the other way. Hop for Doval to begin with. Is that it? Not that it matters because this game's tied. I'm assuming you feel a little bit more relaxed because at the very least, you're going to extra innings. I definitely hate going to extras because when you're the road team, you're just trying to get runs. And sometimes playing with that not not pressure, like where if you get out, the game isn't over. So just playing free um, can really help you in extras. And I really want to tend it here. The chance to win a game on a ball to the gap. And that's perfect, perfect. Base hit the other way. Simeon will stop at second, but the winning run is now in scoring position. You have probably one of your best hitters, which is a lefty. What what's what's the plan here? So I knew he was probably dejected, and I'm on cloud nine. So I really knew if I could get out to a fast start in the first couple of innings, I could take him completely out of the game. I was thinking about bringing in Ricky Henderson, but what made me stay with Belly is he actually has really good stats for his lefties. And that ball is lifted shallow right field. Simeon is going to go out and make the catch himself. And that's a big out number two. What I really wanted to do was get it down the third baseline and try to like get into the corner so the guy from second can score. Well, we're an out away from having our first extra inning game of this evening session, which is what you want at no 11 o'clock Eastern time. Forget what I was saying. Kreiner just walked it off. There's Ronald no way Acuna he won Jr. that game. And he did not miss it, or you did not miss it. <laughs> so that was when the comeback was uh, completed there in the ninth. Everyone went crazy. You probably went crazy. What was your, what was going through your mind and what was your reaction? I would say the biggest thing was relief. I just wanted to get out of here. I wanted game one so bad. But I remember I started yelling. It was a late night game and it was on a Thursday. So it was like midnight. I don't know if my parents were too happy about it, but I couldn't control it. So there's sometimes I just let it out, especially at the end of the game. Like I can start yelling and going crazy. That game one was so epic, right? It's one of those comebacks that, that everyone's always go going to remember. Then obviously later on, you, you advance to the semifinals and face Fuentes. What, what do you remember about the, the Fuentes series? Coming into this, I really wasn't beating Fuentes all year. He just had my number, but I knew I was gonna try to, everything I could to change that. So I started pitching a bit different. Looking on that sinker, low That's and a beautiful in. pitch. I tried to be very aggressive in the zone. At the very worst, I'm not walking him. If he hits it, tip my cap. But I just wanted to be aggressive keep going and instead of beating myself i wanted him to beat me 
Here's the 2-2 pitch from Rivera. He stayed outside all five pitches of that at bat. We've seen all tournament with these power cutters getting thrown inside the lefties. A four-seamer away, and Kreiner's going to stretch the lead to 9-2. to two. Being up 9-2 in the fourth, it was definitely a confidence boost, especially if I'm able to mercy him and get out of here quickly, that would be great. You don't want to let these type of players hang around. So get in. if you can get out of the game and just get the win, that's really what I'm looking for. So all you needed was three more runs to kind of get that mercy rule, but when is mercy rule territory for somebody somebody like you? Anything uh, six and up, um, that's when I consider it mercy territory. But my approach doesn't change because the moment you start uh, trying to wait to do way too much and just press and oh my gosh I'm two swings away from ending this game that's when you get in trouble he's literally he one swing <laughs> away from mercy rule there in game one right here I was able to hit a three run bomb off a side to end it and you're right one swing away from a quick game one win for Kreiner he pulls it to center field a just early swing 96 off the bat gonna be a play at the wall and it's gone and just like that Adley Rushman with the three-run walk-off four-inning mercy rule what a statement from Kreiner here in game number one obviously you won game one via the mercy rule game two as well so that was kind of like a little bit of a surprise to everyone the same way that you had a big comeback you knew Fuentes was capable of having a a, a big comeback so were you changing your approach so when I'm in mercy territory I like going to my top guys in my bullpen because sometimes after a while they just see a starter for so long and no matter if even if they're not hitting them it just can click like that Three. wow what a Frozen. pitch so I always have two guys warming up in my bullpen, even in the first inning. I can sometimes just tell, even by his foul balls, if he's starting to see the starter well. And Rivera coming in, he's had some good innings for Kreiner so far in this series. So I'm always on high alert, ready to go to the bullpen if I'm in trouble. Lukey's going to swing late here at a sinker, pop it out. And Kreiner with the best of five sweep of Fuentes. So let's talk about the grand finals. Do you think you're more focused on this game because it's the finals, even though obviously the top two, they both get a lot of money? Yeah, it's hard because I always think a second is like the first loser. And even though that's not true and I'd still come out with a, a 10 grand, the competitor in me wanted to get that third championship. It just I wanted to get it so bad. Game one is extremely important. We know what kind of opponent Alex is. You're up by one as the road team. You can't be feeling comfortable at this situation no i was not feeling comfortable at all and as you'll see here he gets a single perfect perfect like first pitch of the inning and i'm like oh no one swing can end it are you changing your approach obviously you've given up 10 runs in the first eight innings what's your thought process as far as like on the bump yeah i was looking um double play double play and since he had a lefty up i was trying to work low and away that's really my focus is any way I can, I want to double play. And here, this is the most wild play I've ever seen. Perfect, perfect uh, diving play in right field. One run game. Is that striven the right field by Ellie and the diving catch in right? I couldn't believe it because um, if that ball gets past, this game's tied. He's on third base. He needs to advance a runner from third to home with no outs. And for all say, it, the game's over pretty much. So that was pretty much just a game saving play. So what made you go for it? Um, I just felt like it was one of those instant moments things like why not to win some of these tournaments you just have to have that mentality like at all costs try to win and here I was very proud if you could see uh, the route I took in center field to make him not score so I could walk Mike Trout to set up the bases loaded and the double play. You're going to put the four fingers up to Mike Trout, get the bat out of his hands and bring the double play in order. That was one of the biggest moments that a lot of people won't realize, but I was really like proud of that moment because a lot of people just try to get the ball. If the ball goes past them, this game's tied. So I was really happy with how that played out. All cutters inside. Here he goes, sinker over to plate. He rolls it over to second place to oh. throw to second. The throw back to first. And a big double play from Kreiner. And he gets the win to finish it. So obviously you won game one on the road. What's well, kind of like the approach that you're going for game two? Obviously you're going to be at home. You're taking him to your to your field and your stadium. Yeah, I actually wasn't really happy about being home game two because I knew he was just going to get off to a super fast start. It's still going to be 1-1 in the series, so... 
resetting my brain. It came, it's a best of three series. That's how I was looking at it. And Alex is looking to run away here. And what a statement so far to bounce back after game one. And this one, obviously, like you mentioned, he started off hot and he remained hot throughout the game. He had you on Mercy territory there with a 14-4 with a uh, lead. There's the sinker down in the way. A great play at third. And Alex Gakil bounces back with a mercy rule dominating win here in game two. Obviously, you have to regroup. Quick turnaround. You have game three. You're going on the road again. Obviously, you got off to a very hot start scoring four early. What what happens next? Yeah, this was huge for me. Just getting four in the first right here. Like, it gets the confidence back. It puts all the pressure on him. And I'm still in the driver's seat in this series, up for nothing in a tied series. So this is huge for me. Talk about a response. You get mercy ruled in the very top of the first of the next game. You put up four runs against Jacob DeGrom. Being the road team can actually be beneficial for these hot starts. You can't just depend on a comeback in the ninth every time. So getting that fast start in the first inning is big. So what about the stadium? Because you obviously go to ship it and you lose. But then the two road games at Laffey Mountain, you ended up winning, scoring 10 plus rounds both games. Are you thinking maybe that should be your home stadium or does that you, that doesn't cross your mind this late in the tournament? Yeah, I was definitely not going back to ship it. I just felt like the superstitious part of me, like you have to go back to Laffey Mountain. If you're 2-0 and there, let's try to make it 3-0. You know? Kreiner coming out firing in game number three two one you're one game away from the grand prize and then game four was here yeah the pressure was on because i remember i was i checked my phone which was not a smart idea i saw three time three time you're one game away one game away and i just couldn't think about that um like that's just the last thing i need on my mind it's one game of mlb the show like Forget everything on the line. Just play your best and see what happens. Kreiner looks a little bit off with his timing and his PCI so far in this half inning. I feel like if he wins game four, he has all the momentum for game five. So I just want to keep the momentum. That was really my mindset. And especially bottom four, already seven, six. I knew Alex was not going down without everything he had. So I just had to stay composed, play my game and just go from there. You're up one middle of the game. Here you, you start you start feeling it. No, you got a back to back perfect perfect. Uh, talk to us about how you're feeling at the plate at this moment. Yeah, I knew he was in his head a bit with that pause timer, and this was the three run home run by Story, and I just could feel it. This is when I started thinking about it a bit because when you go up five, I think that's the number where it, it's really hard to come back from. This is when I knew this is when I have to strike. And he is putting up a crazy inning here. Now up by six. So obviously you kept you kept putting the pressure on 16-7, and you knew you were one swing away from ending it, and you did it with Mike Trout. What happened then? Well, he, I, I was four for four with four home runs with Trout at this point, so I had to end it with Trout. I didn't even realize until after the game, but I knew he was just I, when you're up nine in the seventh, it's pretty much over. But I just wanted to get one more run, and that can be sometimes so hard. I press so much. You're one swing away and you're just pressing and pressing, trying to find that perfect pitch. And right here, thankfully, I was able to get it done the first pitch of the seventh inning. And then I could finally breathe a bit. Reiner is your MLB The Show 23 Championship Series champion. And then finally, you could actually look at your cell phone and look at your mean friends think you know texting you to the three time now you're officially the three time i'm not really happy with the way i handled the win i felt like more relief than happiness like that's not a great way to look at it but if you're looking at winning 25 grand as relief that's not really that good but i've learned a lot from all three tournaments how to handle it and how to handle close games and how to just close them out what's your Kind of like your vision going into 24. Yeah, I'm very excited. And I really want to make a lot more content for the game because I feel like I, oh, I get messages all the time. How can I get better? So maybe recording gameplays and showing um, step by step how I take competitive games and helping uh, other people out. And But obviously, I'll still be very ready for every tournament and try to keep winning.